Good morning. It's a great joy to welcome each one of you to Holy Trinity Church today. Uh, I'd like especially to welcome you if you're visiting today. Uh, there's some old friends come back to visit, uh, but also if you're new to Holy Trinity and this is your first time, we're particularly delighted that you've come to join us today. Today is uh, an important, a poignant moment in our life as a church, as it's the last Sunday that our director of music, Douglas, will be here uh, as director of music as he's moving on to a new post uh, after the summer. Uh, more to be said about that at the end of the service. Just one practical notice, which is that during communion today, those of you who are regular will know we normally have a second communion point at the back of the church, as a trial, we're going to see if it works to have it in the Beckett Chapel today. So if you wish to receive by the bread being dipped into the wine, then please, when you're asked to move by the warden, move to the Beckett Chapel rather than going to the back of the church. I'll explain that again when we get to that moment in the service. But now let's just pause for a moment as we become aware that we've entered into this holy place. We're in God's presence here and we open our hearts to worship God this morning.
We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please be seated. The theme of our service today is God's abundance, reflected in that wonderful first hymn. I've forgotten quite what a big sing that is. <laughs> a little bit of voice left. Um, God's abundance in creation, for which we give thanks, but also the abundance of God's love shown to us in Jesus Christ. So let us prepare to worship now as we say together these responses to the words of our prayer of preparation. Lord, speak to us. Move among us that we may behold your glory. Receive our prayers that we may learn to trust you. Dwell in our hearts through faith that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. First, as we come to our prayers of penitence, we confess our misuse of the abundance of God's provision for us in creation. God our Father, we are sorry for the times when we have used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. Hear our prayer and in your mercy, Forgive us and help us. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest, but sometimes forget that you have given them to us. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We belong to a people who mostly are full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We are thoughtless and do not care enough for the world you have made. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We store up goods for ourselves alone as if there were no God and no heaven. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from all your offences for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We stand to sing God's praise in the Gloria. Let us pray. Almighty God, 
who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. The reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to Jesus, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up. And from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who'd eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this indeed is the prophet who has come into the world. This is the gospel of the Lord. Pray to the Lord Christ. Please sit. I know a bank where the wild orchids grow. In June they are in profusion, fill. Oh, there we go. It's a bit blurry as photograph. Uh, The main reason for that is I'm not very good. But the second reason for that is I spotted these when I was on my bicycle. Not going that fast, but I was going past and I saw this blur. Plant life everywhere. And I thought, I think there might be some orchids in there. I could just spot some things that look like orchids. I nearly fell off my bike. I'm a bit sad that way. I was very excited. And I stopped and I pulled over, because I'm a bit of an amateur botanist. Um, Amateur being the important bit, very amateur, but I like to spot plants and life when I'm out cycling. That's really why I go cycling, get the exercise, but I'm out there in nature. And when I stopped and when I got off, I found that there were orchids there, wild orchids. Phil, number two, please. Oh, now that's a pyramidal orchid because it's shaped like a pyramid. That's an easy one to spot, isn't it? And there were many of those across the bank and the verge that I'd found, about 200 metres of roadside, which most people would fly past, and there were hundreds of these beautiful pyramidal orchids. Notice there's a lot of other stuff going on there too. And the, and the other talk, talk, Phil, if you could do number three. You can see I've just moved back a bit for that. That's called the common, I think it's the common spotted orchid. Any botanists here, please put me straight afterwards. So a profusion of orchids, wild orchids, growing there. Nobody's put them there. They're just there. 
So that was lovely. And I spent about 20 minutes wandering around, seeing if I could find anything else. I couldn't, any other orchids. When I got back to my bike, right under my nose was one of these, which is a bee orchid, a gorgeous thing. Now, the flower is about the size of the, my nail on my small finger. These are not big things. This is a magnification. Can you do the next one, Phil? Look at the glory of that. <laughs> the only one I could find. I went back, I spent half an hour, still couldn't find anything, carefully treading. Gorgeous, beautiful orchid. I'm, I'm talking about the abundance of God in nature. Now, with the other two orchids, there were hundreds, so it's numerically, it's very abundant. With this, there was only one, but I think there's abundance in there as well. <clears throat> abundance in beauty, my goodness, what a gorgeous thing it is. But also, the way it works with all the other creatures and plants around it. And if, if you've looked at that down a microscope, there would be thousands of little cells, all slightly different, that make up that beautiful, beautiful flower. So that filled me with joy, bursting with joy. Because in nature there is abundance. As God said, after he had created the world in the first story in Genesis, God saw what he had done and it was very good. A beautiful universe, a planet, plants, individuals. And just to give you a, a sentiment of, of what I'm saying, if I can quote a verse from Blake, that's coming. Whoop, there we go. To see a world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower. That gives you a flavour of what I'm talking about. Now that fills me with joy. It doesn't fill everybody in joy. People in my family roll their eyes when I tell them about the excitement of finding a bee orchid. But nature is more than simply the plant life. It's evidence in all parts of God's creation, all parts of nature. We, as human beings, are part of that nature. We're not a separate thing disconnected from the rest of nature. We are part of it, and in us is God's abundance too. Look at the richness of this place. Look at the people around you. Not, and I'm, in this case, I'm not talking about a lot. It's lovely, we do have lots of people here. But actually, the differences, the variety of people. All of us, you and me, with all our imperfections. We, we are an evidence of God's abundance. But also with our gifts, with our joy, with our humour, with our silliness. Please, God, let's be silly sometimes. With our compassion for each other. The sharing of our sorrows. Look around and be amazed at God's abundance in the people around you, in this church, in our community, in your families. And I think there's a diff significant difference here between the word abundance. Abundance means more than enough, more than enough to satisfy. And the other word I want to compare it with is extravagance. Extravagance is about too much. Not just enough and a bit more, too much. And with extravagance comes waste. We live in a world, don't we, where material things are highly valued. Cars and holidays and houses and so forth. Now, don't get me wrong, it's very good to have enough food and to have enough shelter and to be warm and to... to uh, to be able to enjoy the basics of life. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about excess, because when we value material things so much, usually it doesn't satisfy. It's not enough on its own. And people want more, don't they? And we envy people who are better off materially than us. Because with material things, they're not equally distributed, and we're not very good at sharing them as a society, in the West at least, other societies are very good at that. So what we end up with is people with so much more than they need, so much more, and a lot of waste. 
because there are so many people who do not have enough. But if we return to my nature example, it might look, with hundreds and hundreds of orchids, that might look like extravagance, but it's not. It's finely balanced. All those plants, and if you, if you noticed in the, in the first pictures, there's lots of other plant life going on in there. The orchids are just one of many, dozens and dozens of different varieties of plants living together with the little bugs and the creepy crawlies and all the other things that nature provides. It's a finely balanced thing. There is very little waste in nature. And that's a really good model, a good way to look at God's kingdom. Working together with others, sharing, not wasting, and above all, abundance of God's love that he pours into all of creation. Now, a gospel reading, I am getting on to the readings, the gospel reading tells us about the 5,000. And Jesus, as ever, is concerned with their bodily health and function as well as spiritual. So he's got 5,000 people and he wants to feed them. I, one, because that's a good thing to do, but two, because if he doesn't, they're all going to be thinking about how hungry they are rather than listening to what he's saying. So we have the miracle of the feeding. Lovely, nutritious food, barley loaves and fish. And everybody has enough, more than enough. And then Jesus says, when they were satisfied, he told the disciples to gather up fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. There are others to feed, others to nurture and to teach, others to give spiritual food and soul food too. So there's no waste in God's abundance. And it's scandalous, isn't it, in a world that produces enough food for everyone to eat. There are millions who are starving. That's not God's way. And Paul, in his very rich passage from Ephesians, has more to help us understand this. If you have a chance later today or this week, do have a look at that Ephesians passage. It is so rich. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend the breadth, the length, the height, the depth, beautiful words that he uses elsewhere, to know that love of Christ so that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Filled with the fullness of God. The beautiful, poetic way of describing that abundance of love that comes through to and through us. So being filled with the fullness of God means we can accomplish abundantly far more. Those are the words he used. You can accomplish abundantly far more with that, with Jesus, with Christ's love, than we can on our own. It's about more abundantly, not about being perfect. That's an important point to make here. We use what gifts we have to the best of our ability and with that love coming from Jesus through us, we can do even more. Allowing God to work through us. Now there may be times in our lives, in your life and in mine, when we don't feel that. We don't feel the fullness of God's love. Perhaps in our own situation, perhaps in living out our Christian lives. It's just not quite working. It's just, we suffer. There's, there's, there's no guarantee follow from following Jesus that we don't suffer. We know that. Things will happen that we can't control and that we suffer with. We make mistakes. Things go wrong. But, but, there is an abundance of forgiveness for us. Forgiving as hopefully we forgive others. Of compassion. An abundance of building us up when we doubt, self-doubt and doubt. Working through us. So if you don't feel the fullness of God's love, perhaps hold on to that thought that it's flowing over you and through you all the time. Now, communion 
is a reminder of the abundance of God's love. It's only a little wafer and a drop or, or a, a, a dip of the wafer. But it reminds us, a little bit like the feeding of the 5,000 was pointing this way, it reminds us of that abundance of God. God gave his only son to the world that they may be filled with the fullness of God, that we may know God personally, we may have a relationship with him, being saved, if you like. Let us allow that flow, overflow of love through, from God through us as part of creation, using that to share with others. There's no wastage in God's kingdom. There's no waste of God's abundance. I'm going to finish by just praying the first verse of the hymn, Come Down, O Love Divine. So let us pray. Come down, O love divine, seek thou these souls of ours, and visit us with your own ardour glowing. O comforter, draw near within our hearts appear, and kindle them, thy holy flame bestowing. Amen. Would you please stand as you are able? <clears throat> Let us declare our faith in the God of abundance. We believe Even in God, God the Father, Father from whom, whom every family in heaven and, heaven and on, on earth, earth is, is named. We, we believe, believe in God, God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith, faith and, and fills, fills us with, with his love. <clears throat> We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please kneel or sit for our prayers of intercession. Generous God, we pray for your church entrusted with the gospel. Help us to share your abundance of the gifts you have given us with those crying out for love and hope and who long for guidance and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Generous God, we pray for rich countries with a surplus of wealth and for poor countries whose harvests have failed. We think today of the growing crisis in Ethiopia praying that the people who are blessed with resources may use them for the benefit of others. We also pray for the people of Alberta in Canada, battling with forest fires and loss of their communities. Lord, hear us. Generous God, we pray for our community, our town, and the people who live, work, and visit it. Help us to use our gifts to generate kindness and understanding between our neighbours, creating a place that reflects your generosity. May we never pass by the poor but may respond with generous hearts to the voice of the helpless. Lord, hear us. 
Generous God, we pray for those who suffer in mind, body or spirit, burdened by illness or sorrow. Thinking especially at this time of Marlon Winder, Wendy Datta, Sam Datta, Sandra McDonald, John Ball, Marilyn Shorey, and Roy Dyer. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who have recently died and for their families at this time of loss. We pray for Patricia Jones and Mark Bennett. We remember those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time. We remember Geoffrey Lees, a faithful member of this church. May they rest in the abundance of your peace and rise in glory. Lord, hear us. O oh Lord, stretch forth your hands in blessing over your people to heal and restore and to draw them to yourself and to one another in love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I really don't know what that is, but thank you for those prayers, Laura. Would, would you please stand for what we hope will be the peace? <laughs> Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you, so you are to love one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Let us pray. Blessed be God. Is this number four working? Yes, I hope you can hear me now and forgive me for a one-handed Eucharistic prayer. We'll see how that goes. So we pray at the preparation of the table. Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven we may find a voice to sing your praise. Please sit or kneel for the Eucharistic prayer as it continues. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. 
From them you raised up Jesus, our Savior, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends. Taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave to them, saying, This is my body, which is this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Let us pray that we might both know and share the abundance of God's love for us each day as we use the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Everyone is invited to participate in the sharing of Holy Communion. Please move when you're invited to do so by one of the wardens or sidesmen. You can either come to the high altar to receive the bread and the wine using a common cup, or if you wish to receive the bread that's been dipped into the wine, then please go to the Beckett Chapel. So this is a change to our normal uh, arrangement to the Beckett Chapel, which is just the other side of the pulpit, and there you will be offered the bread dipped into the wine. At either station, you're very welcome to simply keep your hands down or closed to indicate that you'd like to receive a prayer of blessing, and we'll gladly give that to you. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Holy Father, who gathered us here around the table of your Son to share this meal with the whole household of God, in that new world where you reveal the fullness of your peace, gather people of every race and language to share in the eternal banquet of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you. So now we hopefully have the microphone sorted. Apologies for the problems with the sound system today. This is a very Patrick Height stand, isn't it? Um, we have begun a project to replace our sound system. As you can tell, it is failing. Um, so um, watch this space. I dare say we may need to do some fundraising as well, but that's to come. So just uh, one notice today, uh, which is to say that the audiovisual team, um, perhaps more the visual team than the audio team, uh, are taking a break over August, which means we won't be live streaming the services during August. For, so for those of you who are joining us on the live stream, if you want to continue to participate with online worship, you're very welcome to join the Church of England who produce a service every Sunday morning online. The link to find that is on the weekly bulletin, so do join with them for those who are not able to be here in person. And we'll begin live streaming again in September. So I mentioned at the beginning of the service that today is the last Sunday uh, that our Director of Music, Douglas Kylitz, uh, is in post. Douglas is sadly leaving us to take up uh, a job back in the United States where he originally moved from to come here. So I want to take this opportunity to say a few words to Douglas. You're not going to enjoy this, Douglas, but I'm going to bring you down the front. So come and join us here. You've got a bag as well as me. I'm supposed to be the one with the bag. Um, let me just turn this mic on in case we want to use it. Um, so, there we are. I want to take this opportunity, Douglas, um, for you and for Nancy as well. In fact, Nancy, come and join us, would you? Because you very much uh, are a team together, and Nancy's been huge support in the choir. So do come and stand with Douglas. Come a bit closer to me, would you? Thank you. I um, want to take this opportunity to thank you both for all you've contributed to the life of this church and parish and, of course, to the music. Um, as many of you know, Douglas arrived, um, moved in the um, autumn, was it the December of 2019, began in post in January 2019, and within a few weeks we were in lockdown. So it was a hugely challenging start, wasn't it, to your time here? Uh, but Douglas um, adjusted with great creativity and adaptability to the, to the new world we were in with having to do everything online. Uh, and so I want to thank you for that. Um, thank you for the sensitivity and uh, sense in which you understand how the music is not there just as a sort of performance. It is part of the worship and supports the worship. And I've really appreciated that. I know others have as well. So thank you for that. Thank you, too, for all that you did to help us with the refurbishment of our wonderful organ. Um, the organ uh, was in need of a major refurbishment earlier this year, as many of you will know. Uh, Douglas is an experienced organ builder, so Douglas was very much involved with making sure that we knew what work needed to be done and that the firm who did the work for us did the right job. Uh, and I think you were fairly happy with what they did in the end, weren't you? We were only halfway through, though. We are only halfway through, and there is more work to be done on the lower case of the organ later this year. I'm delighted to say that Douglas is hoping to come back. We're planning an inaugural concert for when the organ work is all finished, and we very much hope you might be able to come back to join us for that and to put the organ through its paces. So thank you for all of those things, all that you do. Nancy, thank you to you for all that you've contributed to the choir uh, and singing there. It's been wonderful to have you as part of the church family as well. And uh, we wish you every blessing for all that lies ahead. And, and I'm just going to reach into my bag before you reach into yours. I have no, no idea what's in there. Um, but firstly, want to just... Hang on, let me put this on here. So... 
first thing I have is a gift. We'd like to give you this selection of photographs of Douglas on the organ. Um, there's a, a sort of 365 mm -hmm. degree view of the interior of the church and of course that famous view of the outside of the church. And on the back of this frame it says, presented to Douglas Kylitz, Director of Music, Holy Trinity Church, Stratford-upon-Avon, 2020 to 2024, with thanks and appreciation. Thank so, so a token of our appreciation Thank to you, you, Douglas. Okay. I know exactly where this is going. Oh, good. <laughs> and, and also a card here for both of you to express our thanks. Uh, and there's a check in there to help, help, help a little bit with the moving expenses, if nothing else, but maybe a treat for you thank to you. express our thanks to you. Thank so thank you, you so much. Give you that also. So Mike, your turn. Do you want the microphone? Turn? Yes. Yes, please. Is this on? Yes, it's on. Number four, please. All right. So I've had a lot of thought behind this, so. When I first arrived here, well, look, this was like a great adventure for me. And in the past almost five years, it's been filled with a lot of excitement and a bit of anxiety, some ups and downs, some joy and some tears. But I wanted to get something cleared up. Let's forget about the pandemic for a bit. But I want to get something cleared up because I'm still shocked to find out that there are some people here who don't realize that in spite of my accent, I really am a British citizen. Yeah. Can you hold that, please? So I encourage all of you, if you ever have the opportunity to live and work and exist in a different country than from where you were brought up, you should do it because it's very different than from when you're just a visitor on holiday. For example, when I arrived here on February 1st, 2020, I received my very first two pieces of mail. I opened the house door on 27 College Lane and this is what I was greeted with. Official notice, investigation opened. This is an official warning that we are carrying out an investigation of your address. We have asked you to contact us several times, but you have not responded. There is still no record of a TV license at this property. Welcome to, welcome to England. <laughs> and in the next envelope was your NHS bowel cancer screening is due. <laughs> Don't get those things in the United States, but anyway. So, and then comes the pandemic, and then comes being separated from my wife for six months, and then comes all the different stuff of trying to rebuild and regroup and go forward in with no basis of anything. But I'm still upright, and I'm still smiling, and I've learned a lot, and I've gained even more experience, so I really encourage you all to do something like that, because boy, will it put meat on your bones and give you character. <laughs> and I wanted to have something, besides what now that you've already given me, I wanted to have something that would just always remind me, not that I would ever forget, of life here because part of the plan is is that yeah I'm going back to the United States not because I have to but it's a good opportunity and it will enable us to that when I finally said okay that's it it's time to retire because I'm older than you think we plan on coming back to live and enjoy the country without having to work but I still wanted to have something that was meaningful to me and you know, I'm, I'm not very demonstrative a whole lot. I don't like to just hang, put it all out there, so this is what I did. Hold that a second, please.
could I could just have some sort of memento or some or something. But I decided, you know, I'm gonna have something really different because people are gonna have to ask, what is that all about? For those who might not know, this is the postcode of the church. Okay. That's part one, but also I've had a life in Stratford-upon-Avon for the past four years. So again, so people will have to ask. Yeah, I can, I've got some hands here. <laughs> this is the telephone code for anyone who needs to know. <laughs> So you will always be close to my heart and to my thoughts, and I sure hope I get invited back to play an organ recital when the organ is done. Thank you so much. That's a promise. Would you please stand to receive God's blessing? The Lord be with you. May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing upon all things created and upon you, his children, that you may use his gifts to his glory and the welfare of all peoples. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each one of you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Right, he's had time to get back to the organ. Final hymn from Douglas, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.